Uh, Canada's ambassador to Beijing has met the second Canadian citizen to be detained in China this week. Michael Spaver, as a businessman, was taken into custody in two days after Michael Kovrig, a former diplomat, now working for the International Crisis Group. China hasn't confirmed whether their plight is linked to the arrest in Vancouver of the Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. She's since been released on bail. Well, does the uh, latest development mean that China and Canada are actually working towards some sort of diplomatic solution uh, for what is one of the most talked about detentions in recent months? Let's find out. Uh, Michael Castor is the author of The People's Republic of the Disappeared on Political Detentions in China and joins us now from Bangkok. Michael, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I just wonder what you make of, uh, of, of China's position in particular and indeed whether they're violating um, international law here. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, it's true that the ambassador has now been granted access to both of the Canadians, it seems, uh, almost a week after their detention, which already is a violation of the China-Canada consular agreement, uh, which requires consular access within 48 hours, within two days. Uh, speedy consular access, uh, and indeed uh, speedy access to a lawyer of any detainee, is a fundamental procedural safeguard to protect against various forms of abuse, which in Chinese detention are not only common, they're systematized. In case after case, we have documented the application of sleep deprivation, uh, the denial of food, uh, and various forms, uh, other forms of uh, physical and psychological torture. Uh, it's hard to speculate exactly yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. In this, in this case, one wonders whether that is the case. As you say, it's difficult to speculate. And we've seen something similar only a couple of years ago, haven't we, where uh, the, the Canadians made an arrest and then the Chinese made two arrests and basically they sorted it all out between them. Do you think that's what is being lined up again this time? It's possible that there are negotiations taking place. Um, I think what's important, though, to focus on is the initial violation of Michael's favor and Michael Kovrig's rights, and the fact that this is very much part of a habit of the Chinese government. It's not only the Garrett's that were subjected to this, but Peter Humphrey, Peter Dolan. There's many foreign citizens who have been detained arbitrarily in China for various crimes, usually under the accusation of violating China's national security, which the country often uses uh, as a pretext for anything that upsets the will of the party, which is a clear violation of any type of rule of law principles that it be predictable and permissible and so forth. I suppose this is uh, the added complication is that this is not just about Canada and China, is it? There are There is the U.S., of course, which is asking for the extradition of Meng Wanzhou, and that, that further complicates the chances of some sort of arrangement here? Uh, of course. Uh, geopolitics are always important, but I think it's also really unfortunate that U.S. President Donald Trump has chosen to weigh in to claim that the release of Meng Wanzhou could be part of the ongoing negotiations between China and the United States, which again is fly in the face of the idea of the independence of the judiciary in that the uh, CFO of Huawei's detention and what happens to her should be up to an independent judiciary now in Canada and potentially later in the United States. And it's unfortunate that Donald Trump has now parroted some of the accusations coming from Xi Jinping. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a difficult one to crack this, isn't it? Michael Castor, thank you very much indeed.